So welcome everyone to this talk. We're going to talk about static sites and a new way or a different way to create them. First of all, I will introduce myself. My name is Facundo Giuliani. I am from Buenos Aires, Argentina. I work as a developer relations engineer at Storyblock. Uh, Storyblock is a headless management system and I'm going to talk about the concept later in my talk. I am also an Auth0 ambassador. This is a platform to handle security of our applications. I am a Prisma ambassador. Prisma is an ORM that can help us connect databases to our applications. And I am also a media developer expert in Cloudinary, which is a platform to handle video and image in our application. The talk is not related to any of these products. So if you want to talk to me about these products or anything, my website is fgiuliani.com and my Twitter handle is Facundo Surdo. I would like to define what a web static website is so that we are on the same page. These are sites that are delivered to the browser just as they are stored in the server which means that they are, these are not websites that are not dynamic or that they just have static content. What this means is that the files, the HTML or JavaScript or CSS files that are part of our website are going to be the same for everyone who visits our website or application. We are not going to generate any dynamic content while running to return to the users. So we are that's the big difference with dynamic websites, which are websites where part of the content is dynamically generated when it's necessary. So a web server or a browser, and we're going to see that later, creates the HTML content that is returned to the users while it's running based on some logic or some services or some algorithms that are executed. So this way of creating content dynamically for each person that visits our website, there are two big ways to do it. First is server-side rendering, where the HTML content is generated by the web server that is, the server is the one that generates this dynamic content and sends it to the user as if it was a static HTML document, but previously it had to be generated. Or the client-side rendering, which is the way in which HTML content is renderized directly in the server using JavaScript. That is the way we use to create HTML content in applications that use the React framework or Angular or Vue. So the browser is what is creating this dynamic content that is being shown to users. But going back to static websites, which used to be the only websites in the 90s when I started to get into this programming thing. If you are my age, you know what I'm talking about. But this is a very, this concept, if we start to analyze it, there are a lot of advantages. Static websites are fast because we are returning files that are hosted on a server. And as they are hosted, they are returned to the users without any processing. And we handle low maintenance costs because, again, we do not need a web server that has certain dynamic generation logic. So only with server that host static files, we can make this website work. They are easy to maintain because since they're static, we just handle it like a computer file system. They are safe because since we are not running code, dynamically for each request that the server receives from the users, we do not have to worry about protecting this code. There is a sentence that says that there is no safer code than having no code. So if we don't have code and we don't run code, so we do not have any code to worry about. These are easy to scale 
because when you add more storage to web servers, we will have the capacity to add more static websites and we can make our site larger. And they are more stable because since they don't have to run some logic for every request received in the web server, we will be able to handle large volumes of requests at the same time and file download by the users. So taking into account all these advantages, in the past years, a new concept appeared, which is the static site generation, which is the rendering of an application, a web application in compilation time, generating static files such as HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, which means that we're going to have a project, a solution that is going to have different templates, different data sources, different services, APIs, logic, programming logic, or algorithms. And this project is going to be able to be compiled or is going to run or build where all this logic is going to be run and it's going to create static files, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, images. And these static files are going to be deployed in a web server and we're going to have a website running, which is going to be comprised by static files, which are generated after a compilation process. We have different static style site generator, which apply this content. And depending on the framework that we use, which programming language that we use for these templates, etc. One of these choices is Next.js, which is the framework in which I am going to be focusing today. This is a React framework that allows us to create interfaces, user interfaces, static pages, and pages generated with server-side rendering. So from these characteristics, we can mention that it is based on pages. So we are going to create JavaScript files that are going to generate these HTMLs that we're going to return to the users. We have the possibility to create dynamic routes. So with one JavaScript file and its logic, we are going to create more than one page or foresee the logic to create more than one page. And these pages, we will be able to generate them in different ways. We are going to be able to indicate one type of HTML content generation for each page of our website. So we're going to be able to create server-side generation, static site generation, but we can also generate our HTML content on the server side or on the client side. And we can define this for the entire project, the entire website, or on a page level with the detail for each page that we want to generate with what method, with what rendering method. And with this framework, we have the possibility to create API routes which are similar to serverless functions that AWS Lambda from Amazon offers or Azure functions from Azure. And we can add logic that we're going to run on the side of the server. And if we are working locally, we will have the possibility of having a fast refresh in our browser. So every time we have a change, we will see these changes applied in the browser without having to run any compilation process. So going back to this static site generation, we have a bit of a problem, so to speak. We have a problem that is called atomic deployment. So every time we run the process of generating static files with a static, file, static site generator, we will create all static files that comprise our website. And once all the files were generated, we will deploy them in the web server. And thus we will have a new version of our website, but all the pages in our website are going to be in the same version. This means that we should not, if we want to follow the concept of atomic deployment, 
generate only some pages, or if there is an error in the compilation, we will have to go back in the entire process and not deploying the pages that were generated. So we have all the pages in our website or none of the pages. And here is the issue. So if we have a project or a website that keeps adding more static pages to generate when compiling, the time of compiling is going to grow. So the more pages we add, the more compilation time we're going to have. And depending on the processes that we have in content generation, how to maintain our website, this is a big problem because the time of compilation can grow a lot and it can stop being convenient, this uh, generating static files before being visited in our website by the users. So having this concept of atomic deployment and static site generation in mind, the Next.js team offers an alternative and that is incremental static regeneration. This feature of the framework, it allows developers to use static generation to a page level without having to compile the full website. This means we're going to see a graphic with an example. We're going to have the pages that we're generating in compilation time. So we can generate all the pages that comprise our website, or we can create a subset of these pages. As an example, we have a blog. And in the blog, we can choose to generate in compilation time the home page of our blog and all the articles or all the blog posts that we have historically from the beginning of our blog until today. That will be one way to generating all the static files so that they're available to the users. Other way is generating, for example, the initial site, the home, and the last 10 pages that were written in the blog. So we have a split there that clearly the second option is going to take less time because it will generate less files. But the other, if we want a user to visit uh, an older article in our blog, we're going to have somehow generate that file when the user is visiting our website. So that means that we're going to show a 404 error saying that the site does not exist, or we're going to create that file using server-side rendering. And that file that we're generating is going to be as a static file, or we're going to create server-side rendering for all the cases in pages that were not generated previously. These are things that we have to analyze because if it's going to be faster, on the other hand, we will have less pages to have in cache, in compilation time, and less pages that we're going to have to generate dynamically when the users are visiting it. But this is a debate that we're going to have based on how our website is comprised. Incremental static regeneration works in both ways that I have mentioned. We're going to have the version number one of our pages. We're going to keep them in cache and we are using a property called revalidate with a value of seconds. And we have 60 seconds, which means that we are going to always show the static file that was generated in compilation time to the users that visit our website. To put an example, a blog article. After that article, when 60 seconds have elapsed behind the static file that we're showing the users, we are going to run the process, the compilation process, to create a new version of the file that is going to be stored in the server as a static file, and it's going to be in the cache so that the next users that come visit our website, our websites can see this new version of the page. And it may be the same that we had before without any changes, if nothing had changed in the code or in the data sources, or it can be reflecting changes 
that happened in the medium and we want to avoid generating all the files in our website every time that we have one change in the site code or in the data sources. So to have an example here, we mentioned the concept of headless CMS or headless content management system, which is a platform that offers a control panel so that the content generation engines create content, the articles or the blog posts, and the headless CMS offers an API where we can connect to consume that content. So we, in compilation time, are going to bring that content on the, of the API of the headless CMS and using the text and the different details by the content creators, we are going to generate the static files, the pages of the articles that comprise our blog. So what happens if there was an error, a grammar error, or some part of the text of the posts have changed, or if there was a change in the middle? So if we create those files again and we don't run these files again, these changes are not going to be reflected. So using incremental static site regeneration, we save generating all the files, all the, all the static files in our website. And we have the possibility to do this on a page level. So for one particular page. Again, we have the debate that we mentioned. If we want to have faster compilations, creating less files in compilation time, but we're not going to be, to have the possibility to have all these files in cache, because in the example of the blog, if we want to generate older articles, we will have to do that dynamically. So that is something we have to analyze. And headless CMS, we see a large advantage in that because content creators are going to be able to go to this platform and change the content of the text that we're using. And using incremental static regeneration, we're going to be able to look the new version of the content and generate the new static files. These pages that were generated persist um, between deployments, and this is a characteristic of ICR, ICR. And what is advantageous, but also breaks with atomic deployment that I mentioned earlier. So we're going to see a small demo so that the concept is easier. What we see is a website that I created, which is very simple, a title and three columns. This page is going to be rendered three different ways. If you can see the URL, we're generating it by server-side rendering. We have the same website by static site generation. This is a static website and it was generated in compilation time. And we have the same page using incremental static regeneration. And it is the same page generated in compilation time as a static file, but after some time, it is running behind a generation process so that it will generate a new static version of this page that is going to be shown to the next users. So in this case, there is no change because the data sources are the same and there was no change at all. And let's see the code of this application. I don't want to enter into detail of how the projects are structured in Next.js. I'm going to share some links later if you want to read some documentation about this framework. But the most important thing is that we have a folder called pages and we have three folders you can see here that are the URLs that I was visiting in the project, server-side rendering, static site generation, and incremental static regeneration. For each of these folders, we have a dynamic route of Next.js where you can see that the code is very similar in the files. We have a general function, so to speak, which is the one that generates the markup, the HTML content for my page. 
we have a general layout and certain components where we used the content, which is coming from a story. And this story, we are using a hub from Storyblock. Storyblock is the headless CMS that we're using for this example. And I will show you how it works in a minute. And we call it from Storyblock to be able to load based on the information of that story, the HTML markup for that website. That is the general function that creates the HTML content. We also have a function offered by Next.js, which is get server side props. Since this is server side rendering, this function is going to be executed every time a person visits our website so that dynamically this general function will be ran. So get server side prop will use a URL, uh, a fixed log because it's the only page of my project. And with this hub is calling a Storyblock client, which is going to connect to the Storyblock API to bring all the data from this particular story for this URL, which is this log home. So using this command and the Storyblock client, we bring all the information and we return the story to the general function that we have here. And again, this function is going to be run every time a person visits this website. With static site generation, this general function is basically the same, but what changes is something else. Instead of get server site props, we have get static props which is run in compilation time to generate the site, the file statically. So we make the call to the client of Storyblock client to bring all the information related to one particular website, one URL in particular, and this information is returned to the general function. The question is, how do we define what pages are we going to generate in compilation time? And here is where we're going to use this next function, which is get static paths. And it will generate a list of URLs to define which pages are we going to generate in compilation time. Here we only have this log home because it is the only page we have in the project where here we can de define or bring all the URLs that we want to generate for our website or define, as we said, the home page on the last 10 articles of my blog. And last, we have the incremental static regeneration, which you can see that the general function is the same. The get static props is exactly the same that we just saw, which means that this site is also going to be generated in compilation time, but we are setting the revalidate property in 10, 10 seconds, which means that if a user 10 seconds after generating the static version of our site, we will generate behind that a new version of this same page. This is again get static path, defining the only URL that we're going to generate using this rendering method. So we're going to go back here to our example, and I am going to go to Storyblock, the headless CMS, where we have a visual editor. And clicking, we can see the different properties and components of our website, and we can also edit in real time and see how the content is going to be there before any deployment. So I'm changing all the values of my page, but I want to apply this change. So I'm going to click this save button and we are changing the source of information that our website is using, the website that I created for this demo. And now that I created this change, what is going to happen to each rendering method? Well, let's see if that is clear and if you follow me. If I use server-side rendering, the page shows the content updated because we are generating dynamically 
for each person that visits our website all the HTML content. So you see the changes there. Every time the change is applied, we see them because all the content is generated dynamically every time a person visits this page. If we use static site generation, we're not going to see the changes applied because the static file was generated in compilation uh, time and we did not run any other process of generating files. So that is the older version of the page, the one that was generated when we ran the process before that. And finally, incremental static regeneration. It's going to also show the old version of the page because this was generated in compilation time as a static file. But as I am talking to you, behind the generation process is running again because the 10 seconds that I set up in the revalidate property are running. So if another person visits this website of if I reload this page, now I'm going to see the second version of my page generated statically with the updates, with the changes that lapsed in the data source because incremental static regeneration generated the second version of my page. If you want to read more about incremental static regeneration and to see how we can apply it to different examples, in the official website of Next.js, you can see a, an e-commerce platform that you can use as an example and that you can use for your own projects and products. And I recommend that you see it because it employs this ISR. And if you want to learn more about the framework Next.js, you can see the official documentations, which has a lot of tutorials, which you can read for the features of this framework. Thank you so much for coming to this talk. I hope that it was useful to you. I hope you have learned something new. And if you have any questions or if you want to talk about something, these are my communication channels and we can talk about anything. Thank you so much.